Flashman by George MacDonald Frazier, book review. So I had become interested in the subject of the British Empire in Afghanistan in the 19th century. And this was something I had previously known nothing about, but it came up in a couple of the books I was reading. Not detailed information, but just enough to get my interest up. Uh, these are both books I've reviewed previously on this channel. Uh, one is a biography of Captain Sir Richard Francis Burton by Edward Rice, uh, which talks about how Richard Francis Burton was involved as kind of a spy in Afghanistan for the British Empire. Uh, the other is Kim by Rudyard Kipling, which is a fictional novel but based on the spy game and the the battle for influence in Afghanistan between the British Empire and the Russian Empire. Uh, and this got my interest in the subject up. It seemed like a fascinating historical episode in its own right, um, but the fact that the U.S. Army is now in its own quagmire in Afghanistan seemed to have some contemporary relevance. So it was something I started looking up on Wikipedia, talking about with friends in bars. Uh, again, I wasn't an expert on it, but it, it was something that was interesting me at the time. I talked with a British friend about this one night at a bar, and he said, you should really read the Flashman series. I had never heard about the Flashman series before, and I think this is maybe because the Flashman series is much more popular in Britain than it is in America. Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. Uh, I'd never heard of it before, but my friend explained the premise to me. He said, Flashman is a coward and a scoundrel, but somehow he always ends up getting the reputation of a hero. The books are written from the perspective of the 80-year-old 80, 80 Flashman who is trying to set the record straight on what had really happened. Plus, he added, these books are very well researched, so you learn a lot of history from them as well. Now, it's funny, sometimes you can go years without hearing about something, and then after somebody mentions it to you, you begin to catch references to it everywhere. I, I think that's called the noticing phenomenon or something like that. Anyways, after my friend had told me about it, I started to notice references coming up to this everywhere. Uh, Christopher Hitchens mentioned it at one point in some YouTube video I saw I was watching of his. Uh, Terry Pratchett and John Updike are apparently fans of this series. I, I caught some sort of passing reference that they made to it. Uh, so, I decided I wanted to check these books out. It sounded very interesting. Uh, I have long been a fan of historical novels. And I know not everybody is. There, there are some people who are a lot more serious about their history. They want their history books to be just historical, and they like their novels to be just fictional. But I love mixing them. I love novels. I love history. Uh, if I can get the history from the, from the pleasure of reading a novel, so much the better. Now, this is a bit of an interesting animal. This is a comical historical novel. Uh, the humor is that Flashman is a complete scoundrel, but he keeps ending up recognized as a hero, in spite of the fact that he has no redeeming qualities, through a combination of just being able to bluff his way through, uh, and a combination of good luck, always being in the right place at the right time, he always ends up looking like the hero of the situation, even though he's a completely re reprehensible human being. Now, this type of humor is not quite like a joke on every page type humor. Like, you won't be laughing aloud on every page. But it is a kind of ironic humor as you read the book. I, I wasn't laughing out loud a lot, but there was always maybe a small smile on my face as I was reading this book. And th there are a couple places where actually I was laughing out loud. Uh, or, you know, quietly chuckling to myself. I think my favorite part, spoiler, uh, my favorite part is when uh, the description of Flashman who is forced to defend a British fort against his will. 
uh, and he's whining and crying as he's forced to defend this fort. And the image of that just struck me as very humorous. I, th there are a couple other places uh, in the book as well where I kind of let out a little chuckle. But for, for the most part, it's not quite laugh out loud humor. It's not, it's not laugh out loud funny. It's more of an ironical funny. Now, the history of this period is quite cleverly woven in with the story. Flashman himself is purely fictional. Uh, he comes from actually a, a Victorian novel, Tom Brown's School Days, which I've reviewed in a previous video. You can check that out if you're interested in more information. Um, but he's a fictional character. Uh, however, in this novel, he interacts with many historical figures. It's kind of like Forrest Gump, if anyone remembers that movie. Uh, he somehow manages to be at all the key points in history, mostly against his will, because he, he's a coward and he wants to be in the safest place imaginable, but somehow, against his will, he always manages to be forced into these key historical moments. So, for example, he's physically present. He's an eyewitness to the assassination of some leading British political officers in Afghanistan, and he's present at many of the key battles as well. Uh, now, oh, uh, sorry, an an another thing. Uh, the, the book is presented as if the author, George MacDonald Fraser, had discovered these papers in an attic somewhere. So he's like, oh, this is the Flashman papers that I've discovered in my aunt's attic, or, or something like that. So you have the novel, and then there's a conceit where the author has uh, footnoted it, like he's the editor. So you're, you're reading through, and you get to an interesting part, and there'll be a footnote, or maybe technically an end note, because you have to flip to the back. Uh, and then in the back will be a, a longer explanation of the real history behind the event. So for you history nerds, us history nerds, uh, it makes the book all the more interesting. And as with any good historical novel, it takes a complex history and it makes, it makes it much more understandable. I, I had said before that when I first became interested in this period, I was doing some research on Wikipedia. And Wikipedia is good for what it is, but when you're just reading this overview, you get very confused easily. There's all these strange names, all these tribes, uh, and it is difficult to get immersed in it and give you a sense of like who is actually who and what the stakes are and what the conflicts are. When you're reading a historical novel, even though, you know, it is fictionalized, I, it does a very good job of immersing you into it and making the history memorable and understandable. I mean, I'm, I'm a lowbrow type guy. I learn most of my history from historical novels. Um, but but it, it works for me. It, it makes the very visual. I, I, I can visualize everything as I'm reading the novel. Um, and as I was reading this novel, I kept going to Wikipedia to read out more. Uh, so there's the, it's full of names of real historical figures who were in Afghanistan in the time, at the time. And as you're reading it, you're like, oh, well, this guy sounds really interesting. I, I wonder what his backstory is. So you go to Wikipedia, you can look him up, and uh, you can get more information that way. This book, by the way, was originally published in 1969. So obviously there was no nine, there was no Wikipedia in 1969, but nowadays uh, this is a good way to either enrich the novel or can be a huge time suck, depending on how you look at it. I don't know. I, I love Wikipedia, but I'm addicted to Wikipedia. Uh, if, if you were to read these, if you were to read this book where you were camping out in the woods or something, it would be a completely different story. Um, yeah, so, uh, on the whole, I found this a uh, fascinating novel, very entertaining, and I learned a lot from it. Small addendum here. Um, I'm doing this as part of my scripted review series, which means this is a book review I actually wrote on the weblog 10 years ago, uh, and I'm just revisiting it and reading it out loud to make a YouTube video out of it. 
since that time, uh, I've changed my perspective on this novel a little bit. About three years or so after I originally re read the novel, I was bored one afternoon and I went onto Amazon and I, you know, I sometimes like reading Amazon reviews. Uh, and I thought, oh, it'd just be interesting to read the reviews of uh, Flashman. You know, it's a classic book. A lot, everybody loves it. See what, see, see what people are saying about how great this book was. And I found that a lot of the discussion on the Amazon review page uh, was about a rape that happened in the book. Um, which, when I was originally writing this review ten years ago, did not strike me at the time as something at all worth notable or uh, worth talking about. After I realized how important this was to reviewers on Amazon, I realized this was a blind spot of mine. It was something I should have been more clued into, should have maybe made a more bigger deal about, and should have realized that people, people would be sensitive to this. Um, I think maybe especially women reviewers on Amazon were, had a tendency to be more upset about this. So, so maybe this was a blind spot with male privilege or whatever. Uh, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, I, I, I completely, it did not register at the time that it was a big deal and I apologize for that oversight. It is mentioned in somewhat of an offhanded way in the novel. I read the book 10 years ago, so I'm going off of memory here. Pardon me if I get this a little bit wrong, but I, I think it was something like, she put up a bit of a fight, but sometimes I like it a bit rough. Or, or something to that effect. You know, just kind of one sentence, no graphic de descriptions, kind of more alluded to than actually described. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's there. It, I mean, it, it, it is there. Um, now, what to make of this? I mean, on the one hand, the whole premise of Flashman is that he's supposed to be a reprehensible character. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, he's not supposed to be a nice guy who's doing nice things. On the other hand, you know, people are sensitive to this. Um, some people have traumatic memories associated with this, or, you know, some people... To, to a lot of people, this is not a joke to them. Um, as well, this novel was written back in 1969, so it may have been a time when people were less sensitive about this stuff. Uh, I, I don't know, really. Uh, as you can tell from my review, I really enjoyed this book. And so I'm hesitant to say, don't read it. Uh, we're, we're throwing this one out. It, it's, it's in the trash pile now. On the other hand, I cannot recommend it with, without a serious caveat that, yeah, that this, this is part of the book. If this is going to be traumatic for you, stay away from it. Uh, if, 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 you know, that you're going to be seriously offended by this, uh, don't read it, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I think all things considered, I still consider myself a fan of this book. I, yeah, I do agree that this one particular part did cross a line. Uh, and again, I didn't catch that on my first reading, uh, that a line had been crossed. But after seeing other people's reviews, I've, I've come around to that. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know. This is a bit of an awkward place to end the review, but this is essentially the end of my review. I, I don't know. L let me know what you think. Uh, is it okay because Flashman is an anti-hero? Uh, is it not okay and we should not read this book? Or is it, uh, is it a line that's been crossed, but on the whole, the book is still worth reading anyways? L let me know what you think.